and welcome back and today we're going to do a bench test of that brand new Synology 10 GBE card the E10G18-T1 it's their one port 10 GBE base T card now for the sake of today's performance test what we're going to do is we're going to be utilizing the Synology 6 bay the DS1618 plus that was released earlier in 2018 and as you can see we've already done a scan on our local area network here and we've got two of them showing. Now the reason for that is, is we're going to be bench testing this device via 1GBE, that's the standard 1 gigabit ethernet interface, and 10GBE to give you some idea about the performance improvements between switching, you know, if you're going to make the upgrade to 10G. It's also worth mentioning that both of these ports are directly connected to my host machine. This PC is connected, uh, it has a PCIe 10GBE card built into it, and this NAS is connected directly to it. So once again, the Synology 1618 is directly attached, no switch, root, or anything like that, directly from the NAS into the 10GBE port on this PC. At the same time, it's also connected directly via one of the 1GBE ports directly into my computer. Again, no PC, I mean, so no um, switch, no router, all the rest of it. And that is the setup we're dealing with here. The NAS has got a 250 gig SSD inside, and all the tests will be conducted uh, transferring files from the SSD inside my PC onto the SSD inside the NAS. So again, 1 GBE versus 10 GBE. So first things first, what I'll do is we'll go into the NAS just to show you and prove that this device is utilizing both of these methods. So we're gonna go into the NAS here. We're gonna go into the control panel, there's the 1618 that we're using. That's the IP of one of the LANs that we're on. And if we look at this, we'll go into network interface and we can see LAN 1, the one that we're coming in through right now. This is the one gigabit ethernet. So in other words, 1000 megabits per second or one GBE. And there is our 10 GB connection utilizing that card, 10,000 megabits per second or 10 GBE. So those are the connections, and right now we're looking at the 1GBE. We'll come out of that, so we're not gonna need the network interface. The first test we're gonna perform is going to be with the popular program, Black Magic. And as you can see, we've created two network drives, the 10GBE drive and the 1GBE drive, and these are mapped network folders on the NAS. So if you were utilizing this device, um, or any NAS over 10GBE to do your editing, you would just need to create a storage volume to direct all of your traffic to and from. So if we go into the Blackmagic Speed um, test here, and we'll select our Synology 1GBE connection here, and we're gonna quickly check what our read and writes are. So as we would expect, the read and writes, the write is already coming in at about 100 megab megabytes per second, and read should be about the same. And once again, that is 1GBE direct access. And if you want to edit some video files on a NAS, chances are, if you are utilizing 1080p media or 4K, this is gonna be no good to you. Uh, the program will hang, your storage will hang, and more than likely, the editing software that you're using, be it Premiere, PowerDirector even, or even chuffing Windows Movie Maker, are probably going to crash at this speed. But if you're dealing with files that are significantly less than this, I'd say no greater than about 25 to 30 meg, then chances are this would be sufficient for you. Now, let's do a Blackmagic speed test of the same Synology, but this time utilizing that 10 GBE connection. So let's get that started. An enormous increase immediately. We're already leaping up and the fan has started kicking in. I'm sorry if that interferes um, with the speaker while I'm talking through, but as you can see the write speed there, well in excess of 400 megabits per second and the read at 189. Now don't be surprised by the fact that the write speed is greater than that of the read. This is largely because black magic deals with things in a slightly different way. I'm gonna move the NAS and hopefully that fan isn't gonna interfere with the microphone any longer. So there's our black magic speed test. Next, let's go for something a little bit more caveman, a bit more obvious to a number of you. Let's just simply send files to this network drive. So let's go with the 1GBE. And right now, we're gonna send it into this folder that I've named 10GB, but don't worry, this is still the 1GBE NAS. And we're going to send these files here. And this is about 35 uh, gigabytes, or it's around 35.3 gigabytes of storage. And we're gonna copy these over this 1GBE network. And we're gonna get the real world speeds. 
So again, transferring those files, we are getting once again just over 100 megabytes per second, and it's going to take, they say, around five minutes, 30 seconds to transfer those files over. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you wait all five minutes, but I can tell you right now that that speed is going to be consistent during this transfer. It's obviously gonna ebb and flow and go up and down based on the size of the files. If you're using much bigger files, I know some of those in there, there's some MKV and some MP4 recordings from here in the studio. And as you can see, that speed has gone down a little bit with those bigger files. Those files that start with the uh, P103, these are taken from a DSL DSLR camera. So those are big, big files in some cases, some of them exceeding a gigabyte per file. So that's when you're gonna see those speed drop. So once again, that is the speed of transferring files directly, point to point, NAS to PC, no router or switch, over one GBE. And if you were editing over one GBE, these are the speeds that you would be looking at. If we cancel that, and we'll delete those files, because remember, we are still using the same NAS, so, and there's the fan called down there. Um, so regardless of which connection we use, we're still using the same NAS. And if we come back into the PC setting here, and this time we go into our 10 GBE, same folders, but different connection. And we're gonna copy these again. Try and turn them over there. And straight away, look at those speeds lead up immediately. And again, this is a speed that you're gonna be able to work with when editing 10G, uh, editing 1080p and some 4K files. Don't get me wrong, particularly dense files, you may want to look at Thunderbolt storage, there's no denying it, where you will get huge speeds. And also remember that I am using one SSD via SATA uh, reading from and to between SSDs. So if I was using multiple SSDs in a RAID 0 environment on the NAS, then and writing from multiple SSDs in a RAID environment, then these speeds would be even greater. You'll be looking at speeds um, way, way higher than 500 megabits and more, but it's because we're writing from one SSD to the other that we will see this bottleneck. Uh, the more astute of you may even have noticed that the SSD that I'm using is one of the 960 series, it's an NVMe drive, but of course we're not gonna see those performance benefits in this environment. But once again, as you can see, there has been changing in files there. That was five minutes we saw before, has drastically gone down to, uh, to between one and two minutes overall. But once again, you will see that when certain big files come along, we start seeing dips in those performance. And that's something you're gonna see regardless of your connection. Even Thunderbolt DAS, you would see this. But nevertheless, this has been a quick storage performance test of the brand new Synology E10G18 T1 card. We will be doing tests utilizing that new cache card, the M2D18 using um, SysTest, and with that, we should hopefully get some performance figures on SSD caching, but for now, I can tell you right now, for around 130 nicker, this is a good card upgrade for your Synology NAS. We'll also be testing this card in other NAS brands, uh, just to see if this card is compatible with QNAP and more, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. And also, there should be some other videos there on the screen. Don't know what they are. Just letting you know about some other videos on the channel that might interest you. And all I've got left to say to you is, if you do find yourself getting beaten by a computer at chess, don't worry. There's no way it's going to beat you at kickboxing.